Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I am Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. Today, it's all about what you see is what you get. But first, let's do some theater folk news. Wow, I think I'm sounding very bouncy today. It's bouncy day at uh, theater folk. All right, so this week I'm going to be at the Arkansas State Thespian Festival teaching three different playwriting workshops, all of which focus on the beginning stages of writing. That's kind of my specialty. That's what I like to teach. Um, How do we get started? Sometimes that is the toughest part of all, and it's the part that makes us think we can't be writers or artists or creators of any kind because the start is so daunting. So I like to focus on that, Uh, the idea, where does inspiration come from, and if indeed inspiration exists at all, and how to make sure that, uh, particularly with playwriting, that your work has a defined characters and a defined conflict. Time and time again, when I uh, work with writers and when writers say to me, hey, my, my idea fizzled out and I don't know why, it's quite often because they've not defined the conflict. I haven't been to this festival in a number of years, and it's lovely to be going back. Really lovely students. I'm looking forward to it. Lastly, where oh where can you find this podcast? We post, woo, I'm singing. We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on the Stitcher app and you can subscribe to TFP. Oh, see, I got, I got funky there and then I didn't do it correctly. And you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. All you have to do is search on the word theater folk. Episode 25, what you see is what you get. So, Craig and I like to spend time at Disney World. Uh, You may not know that. You may. um, And I own it. I said it. Walt Disney World, that's where we like to go. And for those of you who have uh, no interest in all things Mickey Mouse, that's the one in Florida. Disneyland, California. Disney World, Florida. We don't have children. We have been with children. Did you know that there's a lot of things to do with children at Disney World? You know? Didn't know that. Two adults running around, riding rides, people watching, sugary snacks, the whole shebang. We've been going to Disney World for over 10 years now. First time we got free one-day tickets, uh, I think it was in 1997, and we really were hooked. It was a number of years after that before we were able to scrape together the dough for a real vacation. And I still remember the day I was, I was temping, I was sitting in a doctor's office and it was, I remember very clearly the doctor because I had to do a lot of dicta, which means the guy speaks into a little tape recorder and then the secretary takes the tape recorder, sorry, administrative assistant, takes a tape recorder and then types up what he said. And he, he was a, whatever doctor he was, he had to use words the length of which I have never seen and was a mumbler and a fast talker and you just you play over and over again just going what on earth is he saying anyway I'm in this doctor's office and I'm on the phone to Craig and I remember very clearly you know he said I said you know well I think you better go book that trip I remember that day Disney means a lot to us as I just outlined above, it was the place we went to for our very first vacation. And it was a long time uh, when we were uh, in our relationship before we could afford uh, anything close to a vacation. And actually, afterwards, it was the place that made us put a, a savings plan in place so that we were always saving for a vacation. And that has stood us in good stead even today. Uh, we're currently saving up for a English English, an English vacation. <laughs> I'm just going to stay at home and speak English. No, I, I tripped to England and it's from that uh, same savings plan that we set up for Disney is we're using for this one. And uh, for a while, Florida had a, a ton of uh, high school theater conferences and we were able to combine theater folk and Disney, a fabulous combination, if I do say so myself. it's I think it's one of my favorites. And... 
Because further to being our favorite vacation spot, the way that uh, theater folk has grown, we have been inspired many times from Disney. And I myself, as a playwright and an artist, I have been inspired personally many times by Disney, which I'll go into further in a moment. So why Disney? And I can hear you. I hear you. I can see you through the microphone. All the groans from all over cyberspace. Why do we just succumb to the corporate machine? Don't I know that every ride empties out into a store? Man, don't I know that it's an evil empire? That it pays their employees crap wages? That they dumb down the experience of artists who work there? It is a travesty, man. A travesty. Yes, I realize all those things. I know all those things. I know that there are many elements of the place that are uh, really not good. As an artist, I choose not to work there. As far as evil empire goes, well, I'd like you to show me an empire that isn't evil. (laughs) At its core, at some place, I mean, either I stay in my house with the sheets over my head, or I go to a place that gives me a lot of joy and a lot of pleasure, and I focus on that. And as a customer, yes, I know every ride opens into a store. Guess what? I don't buy anything. I have bought things, but that's because I like objects in my house that create memories. I don't have a goofy Santa hat sitting in a drawer. I have a lovely, simple Disney Christmas ornament which hangs in our office, which I'm actually looking at right now, and it makes me smile. I have a couple of t-shirts, which I did not plan this, but I've just realized I am wearing one right now because I like to be reminded of a place that makes me happy. I like being happy. It's a fun thing. I, I am not always a happy person, and when I'm happy, I really like to hang on to it, so... And that's why Disney. That's why I go. Why I choose to go. And I will always choose to go. It makes me happy to run around like a, like a kid. It makes me happy to be silly. To have someone who also enjoys being silly. To see others being so happy and silly. I adore seeing a dad and his kid totally forgetting the real world and having a magical day. It makes me happy to have a place to go to that creates wonderful memories. Uh, Craig and I really, we've never had a bad trip there. Never. And even though, I mean, as an artist, I certainly might have a completely different view of the place as an employee, as an outsider, Disney has had a huge influence on my work. It's inspired me over and over and over again. And that's primarily for two reasons. One, atmosphere. Two, observation. Atmosphere and observation. Uh, These are a few of my... Oh, I lost the tune right in the middle. I love them. I love uh, atmosphere and I love observation. And a lot of my work has been derived from atmosphere and observation. As a writer, observation is my number one tool for finding play ideas. And there... Oh boy, there is really no better place to observe the world than at Disney World. My brain sometimes, I can't, I can't take it all in. It's sensory overload. There's so much to, to look at. The, the smells of the Main Street Bakery, the way that the music changes from Adventureland to Frontierland and the people watching, do not get me started. Okay, get me started. The vast variety of people who go to the world is astonishing. Ladies wearing completely inappropriate shoes for walking around all day. Families who have done zero pre-planning and they're just sort of lost in the middle of Epcot, not sure where to turn or where to eat dinner. Grandparents strolling hand in hand, folks from other countries, and you just get a whiff of a different language as you walk by. Parents who are clearly fighting and arguing and they don't want their kids to know. They just sit on opposite sides of the monorail, staring out of the window. It blows my mind. Sometimes Craig and I will sit and for an hour on a bench and watch the people go by. Getting a sense of somebody's life story just by how they walk, what they're wearing, how they themselves are reacting to the the sensory overload around them. I think in order to move forward as an artist in any medium, all you have to do is hone those observation skills on a regular basis. Park on a bench and watch the world go by. And as for atmosphere, no one does atmosphere better than Disney. The place is themed to the hilt. Every corner, every crack in the road, every garbage can has something going on. 
my uh, my favorite general atmospheric touch is the way that uh, lighting is used in uh, Epcot around the World Showcase. Each country has a different type of lantern lighting the lagoon edge. And I just love, it's a little tiny detail. It's not a ride. You can't, you know, you can't experience the lamppost. Uh, you can't, you know, eat the lamppost. You can't, um, it's not a show. You can't watch the lamppost sing and dance. It's just a tiny little thing that adds to the whole. Rides are not really rides at Disney. They are to me anyway a lot of them they are experiences you don't enter a turn style and get on a coaster okay sometimes you do we're not going to talk about dinoland you don't want to hear me talk about dinoland um for the most part when you enter a ride you are entering another world another scenario uh you are entering into atmosphere so let me set the scene you walk up to the twilight zone tower of terror you see the tower in the distance. You hear the echoing and the distant sound of screaming. That can't be right. It must be your imagination. You walk up to the gates of the Hollywood Tower Hotel, a hotel that hasn't been operation for years because something happened there on Halloween 1939. But pay no mind. Pay no mind to the walls overgrown with ivy, the broken gates, the condemned sign. Pay no mind to the bellhop with the creepy smile. You enter those gates, and instantly there is no Disney, there is no Florida. You can look behind you if you want, but all you'll see is the twisted path. There is a mist in the air, the haunting sound of 30s jazz music, trees bending over you, creating a canopy, and still, that now not so distant screaming. You enter the hotel, walk right through the front door, why not? And it looks like it's been frozen in time. Luggage stands by the front desk, waiting to be taken away. Waiting? Waiting? I lost my G. Waiting, waiting to be taken away. A chess game is set out. A hat and gloves sit, neglected, on a table, and everything is covered with a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. But there's a bellhop leading you towards the library, again with that creepy smile, and to the service elevator to take you to your room. And here's a detail in this ride that is no longer there, and I don't know why they took it away. It is... I love it, but uh, on the wall in between, there's two elevators in this lobby. And there's an, there was an enclosed letter board that laid out, you know, the events in the hotel that day. And if you, as you walked by, if you craned your neck forward uh, and looked at the bottom of the enclosure, you couldn't see it unless you purposefully went out of your way to see it. But there were letters on the bottom, and they were spelled out, "You are doomed." Atmosphere, love it. And this goes on, right? You go from the cobweb-encrusted library to the cold, damp basement to get to the service elevator, and only then do you actually get on the ride with the seatbelts and everything. On the ride, it's a whole other story. But that, my friends, that is atmosphere. That is known as creating a world. That is more than your little drop thrill ride, which every theme park has, right? You get in a chair, you get thrown up in the air, you plunge down to the earth. This is a drop ride that is has a whole world built around it. And as a writer and a playwright, especially as a playwright, that is the job of the playwright. It is the job to create a world on stage. Sometimes I have little to work with and I have to create the world in the minds of the audience. But it doesn't matter if I have a Disney-sized budget or a pea-sized budget. It's still my job to make up the world of the play and all its vivid living detail. And seeing a fantastical, detailed, amazingly detailed world created around a simple, uh, really, okay, it's really not that simple. The elevator leaves a shaft and the drag sequences, the drop sequence is random and there's special effects, but that's, again, that's another day. I'll be here all forever otherwise. To see another world associated with a theme park ride, I've, I'm, I find that inspiring. It makes me want to make sure I put in as much effort into the world I create, to make sure that there is detail, that characters have specific journeys, to never, to never let plot holes in my stories go by the wayside. That is what Disney does for me. And it does it every single time for over 10 years. So there's actually a real, there's a real reason that I'm bringing all this up. I'm not here to shill for the mouse or to get you to change your mind about it. I, frankly, if you don't like it, well, good for you. I don't care. I like it. You should have your opinions and you should stick by them and what you like is what you like and if you have a stance against Disney, okay, cool, why not? But last summer, Greg and I, we went to Darien Lake. 
Darien Lake is a theme park. It's uh, less than an hour from our house. It was reasonably priced. We could stay on site and walk to the park. It was pretty cool. Uh, Darien Lake according to their own press, is Western New York's source for family fun and great memories worth repeating. Remember that. Great memories worth repeating. That's what I've been talking about for Disney, right? That's what we have at Disney. That's what I've set up here. For me, Disney is a place that creates memories. I have a uh, Christmas ornament hanging on my wall still that I look at and I get a memory. Uh, Disney is a place that we want to return to time and time again for years and years and years and years. Started going in 1997. Here we are in 2013. We went twice in 2012. If we're lucky, fingers crossed, we'll be going twice in 2013. So we went to Darien Lake. And on paper, Darien did look like fun. Big coasters, some interesting in a dub way shows, which Craig and I love. There's a reason we watch reality shows. They interest us in a dumb way. We revel in the dumbness. Revel in the dumbness. I like that. Okay. And on paper, I guess we thought it had the possibility of being a mini Disney, you know, close to home. You know, you get a season's pass, you go a couple times in the summer. It's something fun for us to do. And we're not going to do that. We went once. We will not go more than once. We did not create memories. Well, well, we didn't create any good memories. When I look at these two theme parks, Disney, Darien Lake it is a case 100% of what you see is what you get. Disney costs more, you bet, but you're getting an experience. And you can clearly see that. I can anyway. I see my value up front. It's in my face. Darien Lake, and this is only my opinion, but it was kind of a dive. I didn't see anything of value, anything of worth. Rides not well maintained. I had more than one very rough ride that made me queasy. Those are not good memories to have. The rides didn't look nice. Lots of visible tears and seat cushions, dirty paint peeling. The staff was indifferent to the point of wondering if, you know, you left off your seatbelt on a coaster, would they notice or even care? Not one single person there cared about my experience. The attitude was everywhere. The attitude of indifference. From the rides to the shows to the performers in the shows to the nightly laser blast, which I don't think has been changed in 20 years. It was just um, the most horrible. Oh, it's just lame. It was so lame. Although when I was looking at their website, it looks like their laser show is getting an upgrade with cutting edge water technology, pyrotechnics and high value production. Yes, it could be. It could just change my whole opinion. But I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be spectacular because nothing was spectacular. So why would things change now? Everything was done halfway. The atmosphere was non-existent. And I know there are people who go there all the time who enjoy it. But I, for me, I was just at a total loss because what I saw was what I got and not a single iota more. And I just, we were, we were like, well, what, what memories are we creating? What great memories am I creating that makes me want to return? What am I doing here? It's been months. We went like last summer and I haven't until now spent a single second thinking about the place. And yet when I raise my eyes from my setup here where my microphone is and I can see my silly Disney ornament, I got a smile over my face a mile wide. And I guess it's, I guess it's the difference in transaction, right? What is the different ways in a company? I think it's uh, the difference of transaction, right? What is the difference in a way a company interacts with its customers? Are they welcoming customers? Are they providing an experience? Or are they holding a handout? Expecting customers to pay up with indifference and with no connection at all. Yes, yes, I, I can still hear you. I can hear you very loud. You're very loud. Did you know that? Yes, you're very loud. I can hear you. Yes, so Darien Link doesn't have the same money that Disney has. They can't be Disney. Okay, so let's say they can't spend money on ride atmosphere. You know, say they can't create, uh, you know, 1930s jazz era. But they can sure spend a day, half a day, on staff training. They can sure make sure that when their staff looks at customers, they don't make it look like hell is other people. And I know, I can still hear you. Disney is a company. Disney want Disney wants your money. Disney wants your money. My money, just as much as Darian Lake. Of course they do. That's what being a business is, right? They want to make money. They are a business. But again, they do it in a way that makes me feel like I'm getting my money's worth. I'm having an experience with their product. 
and I do have great memories worth repeating. That's the difference, right? If you're getting your money's worth and you create a memory, that's key. What you see is what you get. So as we wrap up here, holy cruelly, and that's a lot of talking. All right. So let's talk about you. Yes, you. Let's talk about you and your product that you want to get into the hands of the people. You have customers if you are an artist. I like, you know, sometimes we like to not think that, that it's all for the love of the, the art, but you, all right, you, that's fine. That's over here. If you want to, though, make a, a living as a as an artist in whatever field you're at, you have to have customers. That's That's the way the transaction works. So think about what you have, what your product is, and how you want customers to experience it. What do you want them to see? What do you want them to get from the transaction between your product and them? Do you simply want their money? Is that the extent of the transaction? Hey, and if it is, own it and see how you can make the most of it. But on the other hand, if you want to give someone an experience, if you want someone to have an experience, if you want someone to have a memory, someone to create a memory so that every time they use your product, they read your play, they wear your piece of jewelry, they see your dance, every time it's with good feeling, then something's got to happen. That's on you. What are you going to do to make that memory? How are you as an artist going to interact with your customers? What do you show them and what do they get? That is where we're going to end. That's it. That's all. Take care, my friends. Take care.